Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're gonna talk about ways to study more efficiently. And the first thing I want to tell you, this is not a video where I'm going to explain how to learn English and at the same time, I don't know, calculate your finances and also read a book and also clean your room. The thing is, multitasking when it comes to studying actually hurt. And I've been a fan of multitasking for a while before I started noticing that if I listen to an audiobook, and try to do something like play with my kids or even clean the room or take a shower. It just has this additional energy overload. You know this phenomenon when you're in a car and you're just sitting and you have so many plans like, oh my God, I wanna read a book, I wanna do this, this and this. But then suddenly when you are in a moving vehicle, you don't want to do things. This is because when the vehicle is moving, there is actually the whole process going on in your body trying to adjust to the speed, trying to make sure everything is okay. And if you try and read a book, that's an additional overload. And so this is why I catch myself, even on long trips, like three hour trips, I just stare at the window because I don't want to waste my energy. The same comes to multitasking. When you try to listen to this class about how to study effectively by Lingua Marina, but you also try to uh, scroll through your Instagram feed. Are you doing that right now? stop it because you are distracting yourself you're wasting more energy and according to the research students who tried multitasking actually had poorer grades the next tip is easier done than said but get a good night's sleep and a good night's sleep is not five hours i am sorry i wish it was five hours at least eight hours this is what our body needs and if you think okay i have my test on tuesday then i'm gonna party on friday and saturday and sunday to monday and monday to tuesday i'm gonna sleep that is not gonna work you need to have a consistent sleep schedule for example I know about eight hour old. For me, it's actually nine hours and I have two small babies, like I need sleep. You can use a device to track your sleep. I use Oura Ring to track my night's sleep and then I can actually understand what habits help me go to bed earlier. And another tip for me, I used to be that person who would go to bed at 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. just because I thought I was super productive in the evening. The thing is, once I switch to a healthier schedule and scientists claim that your best sleep actually happens before 12 a.m. This is when your body goes to deeper sleep. So once I switch to going to bed at 9 p.m. and waking up at 6 or 7 a.m., my day has become a lot more productive. Try this. Next thing, change study environment. You will be surprised. It's not like you get productive when you study in the library. You might even be less productive, but this change just for a day is really good for your brain because once you get back to your regular environment, it feels new again and you're more productive. This is why I'm all for short trips on weekends, even to, you know, another district in your city or to a new place, because this sense of something new gives your brain the whole new perspective and the whole new energy flow. Another very effective method is called space repetition. And you have to know this method not only because you're learning a language, but because, you know, when they tell you like, do this for five minutes every day and you will become like yesterday, I had my ballet class and my teacher told me, try this stretch for five minutes every single day and you will be perfectly stretched. You'll be able to do all the pause, etc. And you see the same thing is with your language. You can create a list of 20 words. And if you just try to memorize them right away, you're Probably in a month when I ask you for those words, you're gonna remember maybe one or two. The thing is our brain needs repetition in order to master something. And this applies again to everything, sports, languages. And this is why it's super important to repeat things. Now, the way space repetition applies to learning a language is you create different cards of different words. And every day you flip a card and you're like, do I know this word? If you do, then you put it in one box. If you don't, you put it in another box. And so one box will be for words that you remember. So maybe you repeat them every week or so. Another box is for the words that you don't remember. That means you should repeat them more often, maybe every day. So this method is super old fashioned. Of course, we live in this age of technology where you can just use an app that uses AI to determine which word you actually remember and which word still needs some repetition. An app that sponsors today's video is called Linguist. And this is an app that would help you bring space repetition method into reality. 
And this app will help you learn a language in a matter of months instead of years. Their program uses AI to map the knowledge and skills of each learner, adapting learning materials in real time and creating an experience that is pleasantly and uniquely challenging for each learner. That means that the words that you remember will be repeated fewer times, the words that you don't will be repeated more often. They also created the world's first fully customizable language learning tool called a custom deck. This custom deck is something I really like. It lets you create and customize courses based on vocabulary that you need. For example, if you need vocabulary for business, then you drop in a text or a list of keywords and the app automatically generates classes for you to help learn the words from your list. So basically they customize the course for you and it only has classes that you need. And if you don't have a set of words you want or need to learn, Linguist has performed extensive statistical analysis on where to start when learning a language. This means that you start learning the most useful words and by learning those words, you would be able to understand 80% of spoken and written language. So if you're already studying English, if you're taking classes, Linguist will be a great add-on to your experience. Linguist has created a special promo code Lingua Marina to give you a free 30-day trial. In order to use it, go to linguist.com and hit get started button. Choose the language that you want to learn and register. You can try the app right away or you can go to account, then subscription, choose a subscription, insert the code and that's it. The next tip is called bribing your inner child. And what I mean by that is that when you need something adult done, like you need to prepare for an exam or you need to study crypto and you're like, I know I have to do this because I'm an adult, but in reality, I really want to be spending time with my friends right now, drinking coffee or getting a bubble tea. Then let your inner child do that. Let your inner child get your bubble tea and then go to study. It is really important to do those small, silly things that you might think, oh my God, bubble, why would I get a bubble tea? Or why would I even watch this YouTube video? It's okay if it's done in moderation. And this is what I let myself do. Like today, I know I want to make a lot of videos, but I also want to look silly. I want to wear something. This is the first time I've done this hairstyle and I know it looks horrible. I know it's not even symmetric but I am letting my inner child have fun. And because I'm letting my inner child have fun, I think I have better energy in the video just because my adult version is like, okay, the child is happy, so I'm gonna have fun as well. Let your inner child do silly things. Stick to print. I know everything is digital these days. Workbooks and PDFs, linking down below, created by me. Zoom classes, your textbooks, are all digital. But the thing is, a recent study showed that 90% of students actually preferred print versions of their materials. And again, I'm all for printed. You know, for me, it's less distraction. Like if you learn something on your phone, oh, there is this huge temptation to open Instagram, to open TikTok and, you know, just get distracted. When it's a printed book, then there is just this extra friction to take your phone and switch the activity. With a book, it just gives you more concentration. Try it, print something out and try it. I live in an area in California where a lot of people are, they are older people. Like the average age on our street will be like 60. We're the youngest family here, which I like, by the way. I just like this relaxed vibe. But what I notice, and a lot of them are from Stanford, like researchers, doctors, and a lot of them start their day with a short walk. At 8 a.m., they'll be walking around, they will be going up and down the hills, and this is the best thing you can do to boost your energy supply. Even walking to a coffee shop to get your coffee. Something, brisk exercise, morning yoga flow, in English, by the way, just find yoga with Adrian, my favorite. I do, every day, is, every three days, um, I try to do that, or just walk around, super useful. Incorporate it in your daily routine. Another trick that I used uh, when I was a student, I don't really use it now and I'm gonna explain you. There are pros and cons in this trick. And this trick is studying before you go to bed. The advantage of this method is that yes, we remember things better if we study them before we go to bed. Studies show that you're more likely to recall information 24 hours later if you went to bed shortly after learning it. The problem with me though, 
If something is super exciting, I keep thinking about it the whole night and I don't get enough of sleep. I don't know if this happens to you. If it does, then probably this method is not the best for you because sleep is above all. But if you can relax and switch modes, then definitely. It's scientifically proven that you memorize things better. I'm gonna mention a couple more methods in this video, but before I transition to those methods, I really want to ask you to write down in comments below which method you would want to share with the world. What helped you study more effectively? And while you're typing your comments, I'm gonna go to the next method, and the next method that I used is color coding. Again, research proves that we memorize information better when it's structured and when it's color coded, especially for some people who are sensitive to this. When I was studying mathematics, economics, languages, like anything, I would always have at least three colors with me. And I would use red color to uh, emphasize the topic. I would use yellow color for defining different terms. And I would use blue color just for important information. You can adopt a similar rule when you study. The next technique is trying to explain something to your grandma. And sometimes people are like, oh yes, I understand the world of crypto. Oh, I understand the world of NFT. And you're like, can you explain what a cryptocurrency is? And they're like, uh, that means they don't really understand what's going on. And this is a great way. And, and this doesn't mean that they're lying. It just means they're a bit delusional. Like, you know, sometimes when I started learning English, when I first came to my school, I already had some training because I attended like extracurriculars when I was a kid. So when I came to school and our teacher, our English teacher asked us, you know, what are you expecting from this class? I was like, I'm not expecting anything. I know everything in English. But in reality, I only knew like five words. But because in my head, I didn't need to use all of those. Like, why would I? I just learned cat and dog and that's enough. My brain became delusional that I know everything. But the way to check whether you're delusional or not is try to explain this to your grandma. Try to explain something that you're doing to your parents who might not have understanding of what's going on. Even like recording a video for TikTok or Facebook or Instagram Reels, explaining something to somebody, this is a great check for you to make sure you understand what's going on. And I'm gonna wrap up this video with two super useful methods on how to read faster. Because the thing is, when you read a book, it doesn't mean that you have to finish it. Like, let's be honest, you don't have to. Nobody's watching you and telling you you have to finish a book. If you find in the middle of the way that the book has answered all of your questions or you find it not useful, it's okay to say goodbye. And these two methods will help you identify your goals from reading the book and make sure you're actually reaching those goals. The first method is called PQ4R. It has six steps. Step number one, P, preview. Preview information before you start reading to get an idea of what the subject matter will be. Skim the material and read only the headers, subheaders, and highlighted text. Question, what do I expect to learn? Do I already know something about this topic? Is this gonna be just another story illustrating some rule? Maybe I could just skip it. R, read. As you work through material, try to find answers to your questions. Reflect. Did you answer all of your questions? Recite in your own words. Either speak or write down a summary of the information you just read. Review. Look over material one more time and answer any questions that have not yet been answered. And you see at step number two, when you're asking yourself what I want to get from this book and you read the headers and you're like, maybe this chapter is not what I'm looking for. You can just skip this chapter because what I notice about contemporary books, not contemporary, just books in general, sometimes they have this one big idea. Like I've read this Tony Robbins money book and one big idea is start investing as soon as possible. And there were a couple very useful chapters going through instruments. But the rest of it was just motivating you to start investing by providing different examples. But I was already motivated enough, so I didn't really need it. So I asked myself, okay, what I'm looking for in this book? Only instruments to start investing. Do I need to read motivational examples? Only if I have time. If I don't, I just skip them. And so when people tell you, I read 100,000 books a day, <laughs> Like, you know, those people who, oh, uh, during this two hour flight, I read 10 books. This is what they do. They ask themselves what they need from a book and they only read some abstracts. And the last but not the least, the method is called SQ3R. Again, S stands for survey. 
when you just start reading a book, and again, this can happen when you have an exam tomorrow and you just started studying the subject, I've been there. So you just start by skimming the first chapters, looking at the most important things like graphs and charts and actually identifying what's going on in the book by looking at the table of contents. Then you question, again, what is this chapter about? Do I already know about this subject? And what are the key points? Then you read, um, try to answer the questions you formulated. Then again, you recite, try recalling major things that might appear in your exam or that your teacher might ask you for. And then again, review, ask yourself whether your questions have been answered. If you are struggling with procrastination and you're trying to make yourself study, I have a special video for you. Watch it right now. It's gonna help you become more motivated to study. It's gonna help you become more excited about consuming new knowledge and improving your life because English or whatever you're learning is an instrument to reach your goals and to live a better life. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And most of all, thank you so much for being passionate about English and education. And I'm here for you to help you on your journey and to support you and motivate you. See you soon. Subscribe to this channel and like this video. Bye.